Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a fully working Sega Dreamcast. Now today in this video what I want to do is I want to install a region free BIOS into this Dreamcast. Now I picked up this Dreamcast for a friend, um, it's in a bit of a state, it's, it's yellowed. Uh, I'm probably going to do something about that, um, but that probably a, be a different video. Um, so what I want to do is I want to install a region free BIOS into this Dreamcast. Um, now this Dreamcast is identical to the one that you saw in my previous videos where I did a three part series um, on that Dreamcast uh, and this is identical. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this part zero of that um, video series. The reason for that is the Dreamcast that was in part one, two and three, that Dreamcast already had a region free BIOS fitted. So what I've got, got is uh, I've got another uh, Dreamcast uh, that I'm going to give to a friend um, for his birthday present and I'm going to install uh, Japanese cakes uh, region free BIOS in it. So yeah, if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. Now what I want to do now is start stripping down the Dreamcast because obviously I need to get to the motherboard inside. Um, but first I think I mentioned it in the start of the video. Uh, this Dreamcast is identical uh, to the one that's in part 1, 2 and 3 um, that I did. Um, it's a VA1 uh, and we can confirm that if I turn it over. You can see the yellowing. I'm going to have to retro bite this thing before I give it to my friend. But you can see the one just there. Um, and I've already been inside and I've confirmed uh, this is a VA1 so it's identical uh, to the the Dreamcast I did the part 1, 2 and 3 on so yeah what I want to do now is get inside this thing so I need to remove the modem it's a bit tricky I'm trying to do it one end. <laughs> there you go now I need to remove four screws there's one here there's one here there's one here and the final one is here if I remove those four screws I'll be able to take the top lid off. As you can see, this Dreamcast is 100% stock. It's not been modded in any way. Um, so yeah, what I want to do first is remove the power supply. Now, a quick bit of advice, guys, when you're working with a power supply, you need to be careful because um, you can run into something called dielectric absorption. And that's when the main filter cap uh, and some other caps can have, uh, have it as well. Uh, start to charge back up even though there's no power in the system um, so yeah you can still get a, a really good whack uh, off, off the power supply now one thing you can do is just turn the power on uh, for a split second uh, and then turn it off and that should drain any capacitors uh, now the Dreamcast has bleed resistors uh, over the capacitors uh, to get rid of that charge but if you're working on something else just be very careful you know you could run into a power supply that doesn't have bleed resistors on the filter capacitors and you can get caught out by that dielectric absorption and you can still get a nice whack off the power supply so yeah i need to get this power supply out so what i need to do is i need to remove uh, this connector just here very easy just push it like this and you pull up you can just It'll make me look a fool on camera now there you go <laughs> and i need to remove two screws there's one just here there's one just here if i remove those i can just pull this little clip here and then i can pull out the power board that's the power board removed i'm just going to remove its uh, plastic spacer it stops it shorting against the top of the shield for the dreamcast uh, what i want to do now is remove the gd rom now that's very easy to do, there's three screws to remove, there's one just here, there's one here, and the final one is near the fan just here. 
remove those three screws and you'll be able to pull the GD ROM straight out. What I want to do now is remove the fan from the Dreamcast. Now that's very easy. Uh, there's a screw just here, there's a screw just here, uh, and then I just need to remove it from its connector just here. If I do that, I'll be able to take the fan straight out. What I want to do now is remove the controller ports. Uh, now to do that, I need to remove this ribbon here it's just push fitted and you just pull it out the board like that it's very easy now there's four screws i need to remove there's one here there's a couple here and the last one's here remove those and i'll be able to pull the controller port out and we're almost there i just need to remove the top shield and now to do that you can leave the power switch in you don't need to remove it uh, now I'm going to say this, someone's been in this already, I can tell, uh, because there's a screw missing here. There should be a screw here, so that indicates someone's been in this Dreamcast already. Uh, yeah, but let's get the top shield off. Now to do that, I need to remove this screw. Uh, there's one here, 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 there's one here. And obviously there should have been one here as well, um, but it's not there. I remove those screws and I should be able to take off the top shield. And that's the top shield removed. Now there's actually nothing holding in the motherboard now, but I just want to mention something. When you take the top shield off the Dreamcast, just make sure your thermal pads uh, are still there. Um, if they've, if there's no thermal pads on the actual chip when you take the top shield off, check the actual top plate. Uh, make sure they're there because obviously these are needed to uh, cool the these two chips down they thermically connect these chips to the top shield of the case to cool them down so just make sure they're there and make sure they're in good condition as well uh, and these two are in good condition so yeah what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to pull the motherboard out uh, and then i can get on working on that bios and that's the dreamcast motherboard taken out as you can see uh, it is a VA1 confirmed it's a VA1 board uh, now here's our BIOS chip that we're going to be replacing just here so yeah what I'm going to do now is I will move the BIOS uh, and replace it with our new region 3 Japanese cake BIOS it's time to remove the old BIOS and now to do that, I'm going to be using my hot air rework station. Um, but first I want to give you a little bit of a tip. Um, whenever you're using hot air, it's, it's a good idea to, to shield the rest uh, of the board from the heat. Uh, and the way I do it is I get some aluminium foil. And all I've done is I put some captain tape uh, over the front and the back of the aluminium foil. So I can place it over the chip like this. Uh, and then just work on that chip, the area of the chip. Uh, now, if you put captain tape over the aluminium foil, you can reuse it. I can take this off, spray it with a bit of IPA, uh, give it a wipe, uh, and I can reuse it again. So, yeah, if you get a bit of aluminium foil, put some captain tape over it. You can create a template where you can reuse it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all prepped up, and then I'll get the hot air and remove the old BIOS. And as you can see, I'm all prepped up, ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is fire up my hot air rework station and I'm going to get the old BIOS off the board.
and that's the old BIOS removed. Um, came off okay. I did have one problem. Um, the actual shield lifted up uh, and I pretty much know why. Um, it was down to the captain tape I'm using. Um, I ran out of captain tape uh, and I had to get some more off eBay. And I think that stuff I got off eBay was fake because it lifted up pretty much almost instantly as I started to, to heat up around the chip. Um, normal captain tape, the, the genuine stuff stays on there for a long time and you, you you know you put heat on there and it just sticks down it doesn't move um so i reckon that's fake captain tape i got off ebay so that guy is definitely getting a negative feedback <laughs> what i want to talk about now is what i'm going to use to program the japanese cake region free bios and i'm going to be using my good old tl866 uh, to program it um, i've got the adapter boards and that came with the TL866 as well um, now there's generally two versions um, of the chip that's used uh, when you're creating a region free BIOS for the Dreamcast there's the 5 volt version which is the 29F1610 now that's used because the VA0 Dreamcasts are 5 volt BIOS for the Dreamcast so you have to use that version of the chip. Now on VA1s and upwards, that uses 3.3 volts uh, for its uh, power for the BIOS. And you need to use the 3.3 volt version of the chip, which is the 29LV160. Uh, and that's what this is, because obviously I'm going to be putting this in a, a VA1. Now the TL866 doesn't natively support the, the SOC version of the chip. Now it does support the TSOP version, um, but this is the SOP version of the chip. Um, and all you have to do is basically rewire the socket and then you can program the SOP version of the chip. So yeah, I'm going to show you now how to rewire this socket if you want to do uh, Dreamcast mods, uh, read your free BIOS mods. Uh, and then after that, I'll program this chip uh, and get it in the Dreamcast. Now the first thing I need to do before I can program the chip is I obviously need to go and download the region free BIOS. So I'm going to head over to Google and I'm going to type in Japanese cake Dreamcast BIOS and we should get a hit and we do. Now this is the point where you need to make a, a decision and it's a future decision now the latest version of the BIOS the region free BIOS is version 1.032 now that version has a problem with a GDMU so if you're going to fit a, a GDMU into your Dreamcast in the future this version doesn't quite work properly with the GDMU. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the version before that, which is version 1.031. And that works perfectly fine with the GDMU. Now here's the thing. If you do choose to install version 1.031, you can always upgrade the BIOS once it's been installed into the Dreamcast. You can use something called Dreamshell and you'd load in the latest BIOS and Dreamshell would flash the latest BIOS for you. So if in the future the person who makes the Japanese cake region free BIOS for the Dreamcast decides to release say version 1.033 
and it fixes the issues with the GDMU you can always upgrade to that using DreamShell and that BIOS and you can flash that newer BIOS to the chip uh, using DreamShell so you're not stuck uh, with the version 1.031 that I'm going to use uh, just a, a quick note there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to obviously click on the version 1.031 and I'm going to download that version because my friend is probably going to install a GDMU in the future and that's the one that works best with the GDMU. Now when it comes to this region free BIOS uh, you've got two options you can see them here one's called retail and one's called dev kit now the only difference between the two is the boot animation so if you want the original boot animation um, that the dreamcast came with from the factory you'd obviously choose the retail version but if you want that extra bit of coolness and you want your dreamcast to look like a, a dev kit when it boots you choose the dev kit version and that's the only difference between the two files is the boot animation and I always like to go for the dev kit version because when you power it on you definitely know it's different than a retail version so I'm going to choose that file and that's the BIOS I'm going to program to the chip I'm just going to press the download button and I'm going to save that region free BIOS to my hard drive and there it is it's saved so I can close down Firefox what I want to do now is obviously extract that file and I'm just gonna right click on it using WinRAR and I'm just gonna extract files uh, to the default folder um, and that's it that's that file extracted what I want to do now is obviously flash that chip so I'm going to load my mini pro software and I'm going to select the chip we're using now obviously I'm using a VA1 um, Dreamcast so the chip I'm going to use is an MX 29 LV 160T and there it is at the bottom just there I'm going to select that now the first thing I want to do is make sure my chip ID is correct um, this is a good way to know if you've got the, the chip in the socket okay and I can tell you that is the correct chip ID just there so what I want to do now is just go erase the chip um, the reason for that is there may be some code that's on the chip I don't know um, this could be a pulled chip from a, from a system somewhere so I'm just going to erase the chip make sure it's blank and that's it the, the chip's been erased what I'm going to do now is open that region free BIOS uh, from Japanese cake and there it is boot ROM dev kit version 1.031 bin file I'm going to open that it's in binary correct code memory load mode and region that's okay and we're ready to program and I'm just going to hit the program button and what you'll see is the programmer will actually raise the chip again um, I've already done this but you know it's always nice to, to double make sure and now it's actually programming the chip uh, now this can take a, a up to a minute um, I'm just going to leave this and let it do it. It's it's real time what you're seeing now, um, and obviously I'll come back once it's uh, finished programming.
and now it's doing a verify just to make sure the contents of the chip has been written correctly and there we go programming successful now what I like to do is just to triple check make sure that that buffer is exactly what's on the chip so I'm just gonna cover my backside and do another verify just to triple check and make sure and there we go verified finished um, and that's it that's the chip programmed all ready to be installed into our VA1 Dreamcast
that's the Japanese cake region 3 BIOS installed let's get this Dreamcast back together and give it a test and I've partially put the Dreamcast together I don't want to fully put it together because obviously if there's something wrong I want to get back inside and have a look so it's only partially back together so let's power on hopefully we get a boot and there we go so that's a successful install and yeah it's asking me to set the time and date because obviously it's been apart and uh, the backup battery's lost the uh, time and date so I'm just gonna go through that and press start and we'll get past that and there you can see the revision uh, of the BIOS 1.031 so that's a successful Japanese cake region 3 BIOS install so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the lid back on and I can wrap up the video and we're all back together now before I power on the Dreamcast I just want to say something uh, that I said in the start of the video this Dreamcast now uh, is at the same point as when I started off part one of my other Dreamcast video so I'm going to call this part zero it's basically a prequel but unlike the Star Wars films uh, this is a good prequel <laughs> but yeah I've got House of the Dead 2 uh, in the drive shut the lid power on and we should see that dev kit boot animation and there it is now while House of the Dead 2 is booting um, I'm probably going to do a follow up on this um, Dreamcast because I want to retro it as you can see uh, it's you know it's going yellow um, I'm probably going to do some more internal mods to it um, and then obviously this will be going to my friend as a, a birthday present I don't think I'm going to put a GDMU in there I might leave it up to him if he wants to put one in there um, just press start but yeah I'm going to do some more mods on this Dreamcast and there we go there's House of the Dead 2 so yeah I hope you like this video guys if you do please give it a big thumbs up like, comment, subscribe all the usual stuff and as always I'll catch you on the next one. You never know. We do free dream pass. <laughs>